sometimes there can be some things that we think about um they can cross our minds and, and they could be realistic possibilities but then when we think about it we're like oh no I, I just i don't want that to happen i don't even want to think about it you know i'm not even going to talk about it i'm not going to have that uncomfortable conversation but since some of those uh situations they are realistic possibilities we got to talk about it we got to talk about it and, and jeff zrebic in his latest article in the athletic um he brought that conversation to light because it is a real conversation that needs to be had uh and of course with the baltimore ravens we all know that they are talking with lamar jackson uh trying to get something worked out with lamar jackson uh, we don't know how it's going we don't know what the numbers are we don't know what anything is we don't know anything about the negotiations but we do know that they are negotiating um so however that goes obviously as we've talked about it's going to have a huge impact on the ravens this off season uh and they have several decisions that they they, they need to make uh, over the next couple of weeks um that's going to impact the salary cap whether they use the franchise uh, y'all know already but one of those other tough decisions that the ravens are going to have to make um obviously with lamar jackson as a starting quarterback whether they're going to keep him whether they're going to sign him to a long-term deal if he even accepts a long-term deal from him uh whether they're going to trade him uh what wh whatever's going to happen is going to happen but the backup quarterback situation uh, as jeff brought out is also very important uh and he brought out how um with lamar jackson in the end of 2018 uh he played the rest of the season started the rest of the season when flacco uh went down with the hip injury um and then in, in 2019 and 20 he played in all but two games uh but then he said but how the last two seasons have ended with jackson sidelined by injuries and the ravens trying to survive must win games with ex undrafted free agents tyler huntley anthony brown and journeyman Josh Johnson at quarterback it should be fresh in general manager EDC's mind as he prepares for the March 15th start to free agency. And that is true. That is true. Lamar Jackson missed the last, uh, this year, I think the last five, six games, something like that. And then last year, I think it was like maybe five, six, maybe seven games. I forget how many. But he missed significant time these last two years. Um, so, like we said, the, the last offseason, uh, my biggest thing for the Baltimore Ravens, my motto for them well, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Uh, and But this this is tricky, though. This situation with the quarterbacks is tricky because, one, you don't know what's going to happen with your starting quarterback. You don't know if he's going to be with you or not. But then on top of that, um, how much money do you really want to spend on a backup? Because, you, hey, you know it's a possibility they could play. It's a real possibility that they could play. Um, and then there's a possibility that they may not play. You, you just you don't know. So do you allocate extra funds to backup quarterback to upgrading it significantly? Or do you hold back? Or do you like meet in the middle? What do you do? But let's continue uh, with this article. Uh, he said, if there was, a, and, and real quick, shout out to Jeff Zrebic, man. Because he is great, great at reporting, great at, with his articles. He's great. We got to have him back on again. But anyway, he said, if there was ever an offseason to invest in a backup QB position, this would be it. Certainly the Ravens have more important priorities, none bigger than finding a compromise on a long-term extension with Lamar Jackson. Uh, the wide receiver room <laughs> needs to be rebuilt. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Uh, and the lack of quality depth at cornerback is problematic. So, yeah, Jeff just listen to all the problems, all the issues that Ravens got, because they do have some issues. Uh, they certainly, Well, I don't want to call them issues, but they have some holes on the team that need to be filled. Uh, and again, I keep saying that like this is Eric DaCosta's biggest off season that he's had. But anyway, let, let, let's keep going because I, I want to get to the good part. Um, he said the Ravens only have five projected 2023 draft picks and are going to find themselves awfully tight against the cap if they carry Jackson on the franchise tag this season. And we've discussed that a lot, too. So y'all y'all are already well versed in the franchise tag stuff. So we don't need to dwell on that. Anyway, uh, well, we need to dwell on it because it's a real possibility, but we don't need to explain it too much. Uh, in other words, the Casa won't have a whole lot of assets to f at his disposal to fill the team's most pressing needs. And a quality backup quarterback might be pretty low on the list. So um, when you compare uh, the backup quarterback position uh, and what you would need, uh, versus wide receiver cornerback and obviously lamar jackson at the top yeah it's like okay well yeah maybe we don't need to worry about backup quarterback as much but let's keep going 
Uh, over the past two seasons, the Ravens are 2-8 and eight in games not started by Lamar. Uh, that's not all on Huntley, who was the starter for both of those wins. So, okay. I didn't realize that was what the record was. I knew it was rough, but 2-8. and eight, Yeah, so, yeah. See, you need 8 so you can win more than two more games. Anyway, uh, that's not all on Huntley, who was the starter for both of those wins and didn't play in two of those losses. Huntley, who's a restricted free agent this offseason, has played well at times, and the shoulder and wrist issues seem to be at the root of some of his struggles this past season. So, um, him being a restricted free agent, that means the Ravens have his rights. Um, they, I believe that means that they can, they get, with him being an undrafted free agent too, I believe they can place a low-round tender on him. Uh, it would be for like, Maybe like one between one to two mil, I believe. Don't quote me on this, cause we'll we'll find out shortly. But I believe they can place a, a a tender on him, and they can keep him this year, and then next year he would be an unrestricted free agent. Now, if somebody were to sign him to an offer sheet, because they can do that, um, then if they sign him to an offer sheet and Ravens don't match, if it's a low round tender, then he would just go to that team, and the Ravens wouldn't get any compensation. But if they place like a fourth round tender on him. Uh, or higher, or third, or second. I mean, they're not going to place no first, second, or third, or fourth round tender on Tyler Huntley. I just don't see it. But um, if they placed a higher round tender on him, then they would get that back in compensation. Like, f just f using this as, as an example, if they placed a third round tender on Tyler Huntley and the team signed him to an offer sheet and he went to that team, Ravens didn't match, the Ravens would get a third round pick. So, but I, yeah, I, I don't expect them to place a high round tender on Tyler Huntley. Um, and then uh, it says, but the Ravens have to at least consider whether they can comfortably upgrade there uh, with a more established veteran. Um, Jackson's injury and illness issues may just be a two year blip, but Baltimore needs to cover itself adequately, if not. So Jeff Zrebic just basically saying, hey, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Uh, you want to have somebody ready to go just in case uh, Lamar Jackson is uh, there's also the matter of Jackson's contract situation If an extension can't be worked out over the next couple of months And the Ravens opt against trading him They'll have to be comfortable with him playing on the tag That also means coming to grips with the fact that Jackson might stay away from the facility And miss all of the offseason workouts and mini camps And possibly all, if not most, of training camp Yes, that is also something Y'all know we've talked about on here a lot If it gets to the franchise tag And it gets past the deadline to... Uh, to sign him to an extension and name it. Ooh, I mean, with the franchise tag alone, it's gonna be ugly. But well, I, I would expect it to be ugly. It's nothing set in stone, but I just, yeah, I just don't see it being pretty. Anyway, uh, the Ravens will need a contingency plan uh, in place. They need to be adequately prepared for Week One, whether Jackson is on the field or not. So here we go. Let's get to the good stuff uh, Well, I mean, that was all good stuff But let's get to the even gooder stuff uh, They're figuring to be a number of veteran quarterbacks With extensive starting experience on the market too A guy such as Jimmy Garoppolo Isn't signing somewhere to be an insurance policy So he was basically exiting him off Crossing him off the list um, He'll almost certainly be someone starting in 2023 Pending free agents such as Daniel Jones and Geno Smith Probably aren't hitting the open market either yeah, it's been said that the Giants, they want to retain Daniel Jones. I think they said a number that had been floating around had been like $25 million a year or maybe $35 million a year. I forgot which one it was, but yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, and Geno Smith, we'll see what happens with him. Because I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm just I'm not completely sold on Seattle bringing him back. That's just me, though. So we'll see. Anyway, uh, however, guys such as Baker Mayfield, Sam Donald, Jacoby Brissett, and Andy Dalton and Cooper Rush all could be available. What are, what, what's some names on that list, huh? Let's, let's just run it back. Let's, let's read it one more time. Baker Mayfield, Sam Donald, Jacoby Brissett, Andy Dalton, Cooper Rush all could be available. So, too, could Teddy Bridgewater, Case Keenum, Mike White, Taylor Heineke, Gardner Minshew, and Drew Locke. I didn't know Tyler, Taylor, Taylor Heineke was a free agent. I didn't know that. I ain't saying I want him on the rails, but I didn't know he was a free agent. <laughs> anyway. Uh, perhaps not all of those guys are upgrades over Huntley or the best fits for the type of offense the Ravens want to run, but there are still enough options where the Ravens should be able to find a good fit. Now, uh, I, I, I got I to gotta double check on that restricted free agency thing, um, but we'll, 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 we'll look that up in a little bit. Um, anyway, uh, Let's go to, uh, well, we can talk about this, this money part real quick. He said, for the, for the top backups, the Ravens are probably going to have to be willing to spend in the 6 to $8 million 
uh, per year range, which they've been hesitant to do for a backup quarterback in the past. It's a hefty price for a team that could be up against the salary cap, but the Ravens have already experienced the cost of being without their starting quarterback for important stretches of the season, and it's been significant. And that's true. That is an unfortunate truth. Uh, for the past two years, uh, Lamar Jackson has missed significant time due to injury. So what do you do in that case? You you stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Now, I feel like you're you're limited with how ready you can be. And obviously, you, you hope Lamar Jackson uh, can play in, in all the games. Uh, you, you hope that with Lamar Jackson, the only reason that he's sitting out is because the Ravens already clinched this or clinched that or they blowing this team out here and there. Man, when the last time the Ravens had a blowout? When the last time they like like really blew a team out? I can't remember right now. But anyway, um, I mean, Tampa, they that wasn't a blowout, though. Um, I, can't, I can't think of it right now. In New Orleans, that wasn't a blowout. I mean, they won decisively, but it wasn't like a blowout, blowout. Anyway, um, so yeah, you got to be ready. But now let, let's get to the, 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 the most fun part, the funniest part about this whole thing. Um, so with uh, the backup quarterback position, there are uh, some real possibilities with some different guys that the Ravens could look at. Uh, and one of those possibilities is Mr. Baker Mayfield. And I know when you think, when I thought Baker Mayfield, when I first saw this, I was like, Ooh, yikes. That's um, Baker Mayfield. Like, look, Baker Mayfield, cool. But uh, yeah, no, nah, that just... Uh, that wouldn't be my uh, my preference, um, but I mean, obviously it's Lamar Jackson. But uh, let's let's just read this part of the article. Jess Rebick said, uh, "I wouldn't be too quick to dismiss a potential Ravens Mayfield pairing. I'd fully expect Mayfield to sign somewhere that gives him the best opportunity to be the Week One starter. Maybe that's staying with the Rams if there are questions about Matthew Stafford's health." So that's why they brought him in in the first place Because Matthew Stafford was injured And Rams was like, alright, Baker, look, come on, let's just do it I think he won the first game, got a game-winning drive And then after that, I don't remember what happened to him after that But, um, so him staying with the Rams Is a real possibility And think about this, like this It's been five years Baker Mayfield was the number one overall pick Number one Number one overall pick And he is now on his well, he's been on his third team because he went from the Browns to the Panthers to the Rams. His third team. Five years. Number one overall pick. And you look at Sam Donald. He was a high pick. He's on. He's just been on two teams because he's just been on the Jets and the Panthers. Um, you look at Josh Rosen, another high pick. He was on He was on more than two, two three teams because he was on – the Cardinals, the 49ers, the Dolphins, the Bucks. I, f I feel like I'm missing somebody too. I gotta be. But the 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 last men standing are Josh Allen, then of course Lamar Jackson. And we'll see if next year Lamar Jackson will have only played for one or he'll be on his second team. But anyway, back to Baker Mayfield. Uh, I said, I wouldn't be too quick to dismiss the potential Ravens in Baker Mayfield pairing. I'd fully expect Mayfield to sign somewhere that gives him the best opportunity to be the week one starter. Maybe that's staying with the Rams if there are questions about Matthew Stafford's health. But if there's not a decent starting opportunity available to him, the Ravens would represent a soft landing spot. Uh, it's well documented that the Ravens liked Baker Mayfield coming out of the draft. He has a good relationship uh, with Lamar Jackson And he's close with tight end Mark Andrews And yeah that's true uh, And Lamar Jackson's mom he, He's very familiar with Lamar Jackson's mom And she's very familiar with him uh, And he said that she told him to bring his behind Down to Florida so they could train uh, And he said he got a little scared from her uh, But Lamar Jackson's mom Obviously she know how to handle business But anyway um, Ravens decision makers have always liked And respected Baker Mayfield now, this part was like, oh, oh so okay now. Uh, he said, uh, when the Ravens faced Baker Mayfield and the Carolina Panthers in 2022, so this past season, Steve Vichotti, Ravens owner, Steve Vichotti jogged to the Panthers' side of the field to hug Baker Mayfield in pregame warm-ups. <laughs> like, so was that one of them NFL hugs? You know how, like, after the game, players will uh, they'll, they'll exchange a hug with each other. But then they'll like cover their mouths and they'll be saying all this stuff, but they'll cover their mouths so the camera don't see it. 
I don't know, man. But anyway, uh, he, yeah, Bashadi jogged to the Panther side of the field to hug Mayfield in pregame warmups. And I'm not sure I've seen that before with a player that hadn't already played for the Ravens and had a previous relationship with the owner. So, yeah, don't worry about it. Let's see. Uh, a lot would have to happen for it to become a reality, but it does make some sense on the surface. And it, it does. It does. It is one of those uncomfortable conversations, but it, it had to be had. And that's what, uh, one thing I really appreciate about Jeff Zrebic, um, is that he, uh, with him covering the Ravens, he has continued uh, to be willing to have the uncomfortable conversations. And I, I love Jeff because he just tells it just like it is. He is straight up. Uh, it, it, like in game, if you see him tweeting or something, if the Ravens are doing something good, he'd be like, oh, this, that's great. Then the Ravens are doing something silly. He was like, Ray Raven, they, they 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 can't believe that they're gonna have any success doing this all over again. I mean, and it's just like he like he, he keeps it real twenty four seven. So I always appreciate Jeff Trevick. Um, but anyway, yeah, back back up quarterback. Not even just with Baker Mayfield, but with Baker Mayfield, um, it is a real uh something that the Ravens definitely need to uh pay attention to. It's definitely something that they need to um it's an important position because, again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Uh, obviously, you want to do everything and put everything in place uh, to for Lamar Jackson to be the starter um, and him to play in all 17 games. Well, again, of course, if unless the Ravens, like, clinched or some or they blowing somebody out. And then they're like, all right, Lamar, go chill, man. We, we missed those. Days. Oh, those the good old days. Mm, 2019 was just a fake season. It was a fake season. It wasn't real. It was a dream. Um, but, yeah, man. So... Anyway, team keep it clean. I appreciate y'all. Uh, I love y'all so much. Thank you for everything. And we out.